Most people really don't understand what a director does, and it is really quite difficult when seeing a production to know whether or not the success or failure of the production is due to the director. Hopefully, I will be able to help you a little bit so that when you're writing your critiques, you know more about what to say. So, depending on where you're at, a director's responsibility is to select the play or at least approve of the play. Sometimes directors are given plays and said, here, you will direct this, but they still have to either say yes or no to it. At SCF, most of the time, the director has chosen their own play, or I have worked with a director in order to choose a play. But I never want a director directing a play they don't want to direct, because it's an awful lot of work to get excited about if you're not really excited about it. The director also then must interpret the play. They have to coordinate with all the designers and all the artists in the production. They have to develop with the scenic artist a ground plan so that all the furniture is placed in the right place, all the doors are placed in the right place, etc. They have to cast the actors and then coach them. They have to create the stage pictures and the movement patterns on stage. And they have to coordinate all of this, which is a lot of work. So a good director is organized, and they know how to put together a good schedule, and they have the ability to work with various people and different ideas and get it all together. They need to be able to make decisions quickly and clearly. They need to define a problem and offer a solution to those problems or help others in developing a solution to the problem. They have to have amazing interpersonal skills with the ability to work with temperamental artists. And that isn't to say that all artists are temperamental, but in a very intimate space that is a rehearsal process where people are risking a lot, it becomes a delicate matter to sometimes get everybody willing to honor everybody else's work. The director also has to have a very clear vision of what they're trying to produce. Uh, now, this doesn't necessarily mean that they can't, it can't be a collaborative effort, but ultimately the director is the one responsible for saying yes or no to something. And so even if they don't have a, a, a crystal clear vision of exactly what they want, they have to know whether something that is presented to them is something that they will accept or not accept. I hope that doesn't make things cloudier because I'm trying to make things clearer. So directors can be classified in many different ways. Most of those classifications have to do with their directing style in the rehearsal process, which is something that you can't tell necessarily from watching a show. Whether a director is a, directs like a dictator or whether they direct in a very collaborative fashion or, you know, whether they're uh, about appeasement or all these different kinds of styles of directing, it's invisible when you watch a show. There are, however, two ways to classify directors that you can observe during a show. And much like an audience member isn't strictly 100% escapist or 100% art sakeist a director usually is not 100% one of these types or the other. They're usually a mix of one of the types or the other. What type they're leaning towards can vary greatly depending on the play they're directing. So the two types of directors are the worshipful director and the heretical director. 
Heretical comes from the word heretic, which is something we usually associate more closely with religion. Someone who dissents from the standard church is a heretic. However, in this case, it almost means more of a nonconformist or someone who separates themselves from the normal. So I just don't want you to be confused by what heretical means, or if you were unsure of what that word means, now you have a slightly closer idea. So a worshipful director is a director who believes that since the play is the only piece of the performance which is constant, it's the, as we mentioned earlier, the script is the only permanent art object in, in a performance. Everything else in a performance changes from production to production, but the script remains the same. And because of that, the worshipful director believes that the play should be done as close to the meaning the playwright intended as possible. Whatever the playwright intended should be what the director should try to do. Therefore, you will never see a worshipful director doing Hamlet in outer space, because they simply don't believe that is what Shakespeare intended. The thing about this type of director is, when they're dealing with a long-dead playwright, they don't really know what the playwright intended or didn't intend. Depending on when this playwright lived, there may be more or less stuff written about the playwright's intentions. But you would never cross-gender cast a play if you're a worshipful director. You would never colorblind cast a play if you're a worshipful director. If you believe that the playwright intended this role to be played by a white man, that's exactly what you'll cast. And if you believe this role was intended to be played by a Native American woman, that's exactly what you'll cast. Which is difficult to do if you live in a place that has no Native American women. However, I digress. They believe that a director's job is not to create theater so much as to let the play itself create theater. There's a a real difference there, which will be clear when I talk a little about heretical director. So the heretical director believes that there is no such thing as doing it correctly. There's that there's no single interpretation of a play that is correct, that there are only the correct set of interpretations based upon the performers that you're given and the circumstances of which the play is being done and the time the play is being done, etc. So they don't care so much whether or not they perhaps rewrite some of the language of the play, or cut things in a play, or change stuff. They believe that what they are creating is theater. So anything that they do that creates better theater is the right thing to do. That, in contrast to the worshipful director who believes that theater is created by the play, the heretical director believes that theater is created by the interpretation. It's kind of a a fine line. Well, no, it's not a fine line. It sounds like it is a very small difference, but the end result is huge. As an audience member, you may not be able to see clearly when you're dealing with a worshipful director. Because the play just looks like a reasonably normal interpretation of the script. But when you're dealing with a heretical director, especially one at the extreme, you can clearly see that somebody 
has put their vision ahead of the text. Both the worshipful director and the heretical director risk something. The heretical director risks looking like a complete fool because if their interpretation of the play doesn't work, everyone knows whose fault it is, and it is clearly the director's fault, and they are then judged poorly, poorly as an artist. The worshipful director risks putting on a piece of theater that is just absolutely mundane and boring, with nothing of interest in it whatsoever. 